Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Hello, everyone. This is Rand from Shooting It Raw. Thank you for joining me uh, for this week. I've been trying to get uh, some people to, to talk about climate change, and, and they're lining up for sure. And very exciting. I'm going to have some amazing guests coming on soon. But for this week, I wanted to bring up something from the past. And it's Carolina Tomasek, uh and, and her husband, Arthur, who, who we went for a walk in the, in the jungle around my house in Hong Kong. Uh, because Carolina, is, well, this, this couple makes the most incredible photographs of wildlife and can't be missed fascinating totally fascinating yeah so if you don't like snakes maybe this will inspire you to to find them incredible enjoy ciao carolina hi how are you doing hi Hi. ciao this is my husband Arthur. Arthur, nice to meet you. I'm Maran. I, uh, today I sound a little different. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, we go back this way. We go this Shall way. we speak Italian then? Ah, Va bene. Okay. <laughs> e pazzo! E pazzo! Okay, okay. Now look, uh, I have to say, it, you know, we record the, the session before. Uh, I heard that. The problem is the, the, the helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> ruined everything. <laughs> Vaffanculo. Okay, so, so now... You're joining us, which is good because now okay. we're going to redo. We go, the car was over there, over there. We're going to do it again, and hopefully this time it'll be a little bit better. So we go in the car, we drive for about 15 minutes, and then we get there. And I'll be yelling at you the whole night, just joking. Okay. Just joking. <laughs> okay. So now we're back on the trail. We are back on the trail. I have to pick how I'm going to sound. Uh, okay. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> Can you do a proper Scottish? <laughs> I can't. I can't do any any accent properly. You can't. But I can fuck around a little here and there. <laughs> How about we talk about that that um, bamboo snake that was photographed? Yeah. Only because okay. So do you remember the Latin name? Do you remember the Latin name of the bamboo of snake? The bamboo snake. Latin name: uh, Trimerosaurus albolabris. Very good. This originally started with me seeing this beautiful photograph of the bamboo snake and then going okay i have to talk to these people or this person who's posted this this incredible image was it a night like tonight or was it more i think it was more or less like tonight around probably 9 or 10 p.m yeah it's roughly when they come down yes what is your relationship to to snake biology snake conservation is there anything to that or not really well, we, um, when we went to Bali, um, we spent some time with Bali Reptile Rescue and they are like kind of a charity uh, and they try to educate people in Bali about um, snakes because apparently people there believe that snakes eat crops. Uh, so they kill them <laughs> because they think that snakes eat their crops. Oh. So they try to actually tell them that it's not snakes, it's rodents that eat their crops. And snakes actually eat rodents, so they are actually supporting them right. uh, uh, with, with their crops and, and with their earnings, really. Right. Um, so we are absolutely for it. We do think snakes are very important to the ecosystem. And uh, the, the problem is that people are usually afraid of them. They don't know whether they are dangerous or not, so they would rather choose to kill them or hurt them than leave them alone or move them to a safe place. So, right. again, we are absolutely for it, um, but we are also aware that it's a very tricky one because snakes are not fluffy and they are not one of those sweet creatures that everybody loves and adores. Mm. So, and, and then in the, you were living in the UK? We were, yes. Uh, did you have snakes in the UK? Uh, yes. Do you normally keep the snake for the whole life cycle or you kind of get a snake, keep them and sell them? Or? Normally we would keep them for their whole life, but um, once we've moved to Hong Kong, we couldn't really take any with us. So they are with our friends now. Okay. Just to give you a sense of the topography, we're essentially standing or going down into an area where around is like a big bowl. Right, so so it's all it's hillside, 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 and so um, because I think the snakes are kind of lazy, it's really good because they kind of get funneled down, mm-hmm. and downhill heads to um, 
mangroves. So okay. they can't really go, so it collects them quite nicely. Okay. And I noticed that you don't have any camera gear out. Did you bring it with you? Uh, oh. Yes, it's in the bag. Ah, okay. You get set up first and then... We, we find the snakes first because it's, it's not comfortable to carry a camera around. So okay. when we find a snake, we then get the gear out. So this is quite consistent with herping or looking for snakes as they walk around in, in the silence in the dark at night. So right now it's probably, oh, I don't know, about 9, 9.30 p.m. So you both met because of pictures of mice or pictures of snakes? Pictures of spiders, actually. Spiders in uh, the UK? I didn't have no, it was in, back in Poland. Um, we both kept different types of bird spiders which most people call tarantulas and um, we were sharing photos on different websites it was before the Facebook time um, and yeah he, he just spotted some of my photos and he asked what gear I was using and um, yeah just technical things and that's how we, it started really and during that time both him and I kept spiders separately uh, after that I moved to the UK and we maybe had them for a couple of years or three years but then we moved more towards reptiles mm -hmm. um, just because from our point of view they were more interesting they interact more they have behaviors that are far more interesting for us as well so uh, we did keep an odd spider or two uh, but not too many after that the Bamboo pit viper, I know we talked about it before, Yes. but it's lost in the world of bad audio quality. <laughs> uh, you're, I mean, you're using a great macro lens. You're probably, what, like half a foot away? Um, I, I honestly don't know. Not, not very far. Uh, safe distance, I would say. And not too far, not too close. Okay. Uh, the macro lens doesn't like to be too close either, so you just have to find that sure. perfect spot where the snake can't bite you and where the lens is still able to, to get the focus, to catch the focus. One of the um, really striking things about that image is its tongue. <laughs> you know, kind of, and of course, everybody notices it. It's like, um, in fact, you, ha you posted a photograph of the, of the blind snake. The yes, small one? Yes, we found it yesterday. With its tiny tongue? Yes. It was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. And I, I know I asked you this, but Artur, the, have you been paid for any photographs that you've taken? Mm, never. Never? Never. Actually, I had to pay for... Because we've won like a prize for for one of our photos from bali of a snake cobra there oh, is wow. a reptile report facebook page mm -hmm. um and we entered the competition and we won the best the photo of snake the, photo uh, of the year or something oh like that. wow nice <laughs> but they actually we had to pay, for, had the to pay for the prize oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it, we have we haven't been paid for photography but we had to pay for it actually you had to pay so for it's the it, other yeah. way around suck on that one it was nice anyway yeah, no, it it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. There were some really nice entries, so we were actually quite pleased with that. Oh, for sure. And it was a photo of the wild king cobra that we found wow, in Bali. Wow. The one I told you about that was uh, not the happiest cobra. <laughs> well, she was terrified. Uh, yeah. yeah. So over here, just for your knowledge, uh, I think on this tree is uh, one of the neighbors saw a um, Burmese python. A kind of a, but on the kind of on the branch sort of style, and it's up it was, high. It was yeah, it was as thick as his leg. He said, so so, so high. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it was yeah, big, big it was. Landing. You have this, these amazing uh, reptile photographs, but you also have mice. Yes, so I used to photograph mice a lot because. Um, I kept mice in the UK, there is a na the National Mouse Club and they run mouse beauty contests, they are called mouse shows 
um, and I used to keep fancy mice. I bred them and um, at some point I started bringing my camera with me to the shows and I was taking photos and then I shared them on Facebook and, and one of the members asked whether they could use them in the newsletter and since then I brought my camera to every show um, and it was quite nice because the National Mouse Club um, has not really shared any photos before so people who were joining the club and who wanted to breed mice and, and, and you know get them to that standard of beauty struggled to know to have that image of a perfect mouse in their head if you go to mm -hmm. a show and you see a beautiful mouse and you know that this is the standard you're working to ah. towards it's much easier to imagine what you want to produce what you want to achieve and since they have not really shared anything it was difficult so uh, from that time once i've started sharing these photos it was much easier for all of us really for me my, myself as well to go back to the photo and look at the mouse and think, oh, that's so that's how it should look like. That's what I should be looking for. So how many years have you been doing the mice photos? Uh, no, I mean, I used to have mice a long, long time ago, uh, but I just kept them as pets. Uh, and I only, I was a member of the National Mouse Club, mouse Club for just over a year, and then we moved here, so. Ah, okay. So uh, we will also hear and see a lot of, uh, or typically we will see a lot of uh, porcupine, Chinese porcupine. Oh yes, we love them. This, have you smelled them? Smell? Yes, mm. well your nose, yes, your, well, your I've, nose, I've, smell. I've heard them and seen them, but I haven't smelled they them. They smell like a ginger. How exactly do you smell them? I mean, have you approached them and smelled them? I live in a very not to smell it. <laughs> I live in a very peculiar world where I live in a world of scent. I, I was hit by a car. Oh. I had brain uh, damage and oh, brain injury. And uh, no, it is okay. I recommend it for everyone. And uh, my my sense of smell is very uh, heightened. Okay. They smell like ginger because that I think is what they eat. Oh. They are very interesting. We've actually um, seen a. F well, I, I actually. Do you know if they live in families, in family groups? Because in we've couples. seen. Couples. Okay, because we've seen about four in the same spot and they were digging in the ground and it seemed like they were trying to eat the roots of the yes. trees and, and yeah. plants. So. Yeah, it makes sense. But they are very funny animals. They keep. Well, I don't know if they actually keep shaking, but they make a sound. Yes. You can hear their spikes. Ah, oh, so nice. It's to scare you away. But it, it actually made me think that they were very cute. <laughs> <laughs> you should it hug them, work. kiss them. Um, oh. Maybe not. Uh, how do you say in Polish, I am afraid of the uh, porcupine? Boję się jeżo zwierzę. Ah, very nice. How do you say, ah, you're very, <gasps> we are talking about learning good Chinese. Oh my goodness. I will teach you the most important phrase in Cantonese that I have learned. Where is Fir it? First, you will teach me how to say it. Artur, you will teach me how to say it uh, in, in Polish. Uh, how do you say, did you fart? Czy ty pierdłe? Czy ty pierdłe? Okay, so in Cantonese, bingo fongpei. Bingo fongpei. Bingo fongpei. Bingo so everyone says, oh, do you speak Chinese? You say, ah, so it's you, you, okay, you know, no problem. And then you put, break, out, break out the bingo phone pay and everybody starts laughing. Right. Well, you know, for my business, that's what, what I do. I have to do it. And you know, I meet uh, multi- I want to ask what kind of business you I, I do management consulting, leadership oh. training. Oh, I see. <laughs> So have you seen the uh, golden orb spiders? If you said you know spiders. Yes. Those are nice. Yes, they are very nice. Um, not too aggressive. So what was your first date? Our first date? Uh, <laughs> I guess it was in Krakow. Uh, I come from Warsaw, from the capital. He comes from the south. Uh, and we, we met in Krakow. And How far of a distance between the both of you? Um, 400, four, kilometers, 400 kilometers about 400 kilometers I think and so you met halfway we met there we went to the zoo yeah that's, that's how it started so sweet <laughs> <laughs> at last 
Right now we're walking in a country park in Hong Kong. I haven't seen any... Okay, this is COVID-19. We're, we, when we met, we're wearing masks, right? Uh, in Saikong, we, we met. We're, we're essentially wearing the masks and personal protection, that kind of stuff. Social distancing. Social distancing. But now, now, um, so now I drove into the country park. We're essentially looking to see what we can find if we're lucky. Do mice cough? If they are unwell, yes. Can you tickle a mouse? Mm, actually, I, I, rem I remember reading a study about that. And I think it was about rats, actually. And you can't tickle a rat. And they actually tickle each other sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't remember what the conclusion was. But rats are really intelligent. And they've got very complex social behaviors. So it's very possible that they were just entertaining each other and tickling each other. Uh, I'm not sure if mice can be tickled. They usually are not too keen to be handled. They don't bite. The mine didn't bite, but okay. they are not, you know, they are not like a dog. Sure. Um, and they, they prefer to be left alone. But look. Another one, the blind snake. Yeah. Ooh. But it's their common, isn't it? It's not the white-headed. No, Suppose that this is, this is one of Hong Kong's most common snakes. Is it? Yeah, I think so. I told you. I think I think I've seen it before, but I thought it was an earthworm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to take photos of it again? Yesterday oh, we spent like of. ten hours taking photos <laughs> of one, and it's so shiny I and know. it's so fast. It's very hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's but, just, but I'm sure that we've seen lots of them. We just haven't thought that it's Maybe. it's a snake <laughs> <laughs> no. because they don't look like a snake. I'm sorry, mate, but <laughs> oh, this one's quite big. <laughs> oh, guys. Well. She's got a family. Oh, this is, oh, look, this is cool. Look, look at this amazing spider. Oh my goodness. This spider, it looks almost like it's got a, like a plant. Like it's almost like a plant. Isn't that amazing? So it's is this actually how the spider yeah, looks it like? Yes. It is. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it what is. What kind of spider is it? <laughs> An eensy spider. <laughs> but isn't that amazing? It looks, it looks. It is. It looks really. It is extraordinary. And then, and look at the web. I'm sorry oh. if I, uh, if I scare you. Wow, that is a really cool spider. Where is it? Has it molted or is it just so so light? That's so fucking crazy. That's I mean, amazing. I, it's I cool. Think this is the first time I see this. Yeah, I haven't seen it before either. It's Whoa, amazing. sorry, but look there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Bigger one. That one is so much more impressive. <laughs> I love how it was just there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, well, that, that one. Is much bigger. Yeah, no, but for it's sure. It's also too far. Wow, it's that's, an that's amazing, amazing tail. I wonder why. Are they trying to attract some specific kind of prey? I don't know. It's because amazing. why else? That must be a bit. The same species. But the the web is so in. The amazing. web is very impressive. It's it's yeah. Hey, how you say how you say baby in Italian? Uh, bambina. Echo. Bambina. bambina. Oh, bambina. Okay, bambina. What does what does an echo mean? Echo. Um, isn't it like voila? Like Echo Brava. Um, I thought it was like voila. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Shooting it raw, where you learn how to speak Italian and other language. <gasps> you could teach me Polish. While doing herbing. <laughs> yes! Multitasking. How do you say, Hel get, get an ambulance, I've been bitten by a snake? Vesbikaretka. Uh, oh, say it without laughing. Vesbikaretka. <laughs> Vesbikaretka. Oh, it almost sounds like Portuguese. Have you? How, do you know how to say it in Chinese? Uh, no, I don't. That's not helpful, is it? <laughs> That's the phrase you should know. That's the phrase you should know here, shouldn't you? Well, that's not helpful, is it? You're, you're, you're a useless twat. So you are. Thank you. You said that. <laughs> you're thinking it. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> it's in the subtitles. Okay. <clears throat> so right up ahead is the mangrove. Is it called? Is it called a plumbus water snake? Yes. Um, so I've seen one here parked very often. So maybe oh really? Yeah, yeah. I thought they were quite rare. In here, that yeah, they live in the water. Rock. So if we look here, this whole area very snake happy area <laughs> so how often do you like to go out 
to feed the mosquitoes? Um, <laughs> uh, about at the moment with the virus, three, four times a week. Wow. Yeah, this week every day. Yeah, this week every day. So if somebody who isn't into herping or just looking out for, for animals, why the fascination with lizards, snakes, geckos, alligators? I think we were just born like this. Okay. I really do. I, I was catching um, native lizards in Poland and frogs and I just loved observing them and looking at them and exactly the same thing with him. So um, I think we were just born like this and our parents did not eradicate it so mm -hmm. we just kept developing. And it got to the point where we actually go out at night looking for snakes in the forest. Does he have a tattoo of a snake? Yes. Do you have a tattoo of a snake? No. you have any tattoos? Yes. But not a snake? Not a snake. Gecko? Spider. A spider? Do you know the species of the spider? Yes, it's the peacock jumping spider. Ah. So when you did have snakes in your house, so we had mice in your house, fancy mice. Are they called fancy mice? Yes. Okay, fancy mice. Um, you would photograph them? Yes. And would you make extended photo shoots of your snakes as um, well yes we were doing both okay so what what snake would you say is the the real head turner that people would say like oh my god you have that in your house uh, i actually think that um reticulated python especially when it's of a bigger size is, is quite impressive because it's huge and as you said, it's like you look at it and you think, oh my goodness, it's the size of my thigh. It's as thick as my thigh. Uh, so I think that's... You had that one. in your house? Yes. What would you feed it? Uh, well, actually, um, keeping snakes in, in Europe is so popular at the moment that you can easily go to a pet shop and, guide, um, and buy like a frozen rabbit, like you buy, uh, I don't know, pork chops or anything like this for humans. So you can easily go to the shop and, and get a rabbit or... Um, and that's enough for a python, reticulated python? Uh, depends on the size, but the one we had, uh, a rabbit was enough for her. I know that people who keep, who breed them and who keep large females would get, I don't know, goats or pigs or things wow. like that for them because large ones require larger prey usually. Otherwise you would need to buy lots of rabbits. <laughs> sure, sure. So what is the most... Um, venomous um, snake that you've handled? I personally don't like handling venomous snakes. Um, if I have to, I will, but I'm not a fan. I prefer um, constrictors. Uh, but I did handle a Gabon Viper, a young one. It needed to be given antibiotics, so I had no choice. Wow. Uh, but obviously you have to take quite a lot of safety measures and, and be very careful. Where are the snakes? You must have told them that we are coming and they run away. We didn't pay the fee. Oh, there you go. Have you ever had a nightmare? What nightmare? With a snake. Like a snake-based nightmare. Oh, I don't think so. He had probably nightmares that he wanted to find something and he couldn't and he w that snake was running away from him and he couldn't find it so maybe that that was the kind of nightmare right. that, that he might have but not uh, no not as in um, snake as a monster as a scary creature what animal to you is intimidating I don't like flying animals you don't like flying animals like birds I, I, I have I mean Birds are okay, uh, and, and bats are okay, but insects, when they fly into me, especially when they are bigger, I, uh, for some reason, I just, I, I'm not a fan. Sure, no, no, for sure, and what oh, about she's you? She's freaking out. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and for me? I think mm. we were talking about it, that if you see a toad, yeah, you, it's not toad. that you are afraid of it, but you, you just like, you know, you have it's that yucky feeling. Oh, okay. It's, it's funny how some people... Like, for example, for you, you will handle a king cobra. And you're like, wow, this is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> but a toad is just like, ew! <laughs> 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 
what's the most okay you okay just you and me Arturo you tell me she's not listening just whisper to me it'll just be <laughs> you're, you're in my secret in the podcast okay. what is the most annoying thing about fancy mice annoying thing smell the okay. smell yeah oh, I agree. you agree what's you it need, you okay. need to clean them like twice a week okay if you don't otherwise it's very bad do snakes and you, if you if you have them like hundreds it's like oh, very oh, bad oh really so when people come into your house and you have a hundred mice are people like oh my god what does that smell uh maybe not with her because actually she we're cleaning them <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> Another thing is that we had a special mouse room, so you can always yeah, yeah, close it. Yeah, work. What's the longest you've spent out um, looking for, f just looking around? In Hong Kong or in general? In general, in your life. Well, yesterday we spent a whole day in Lantau and, and have and a bit of the night. Uh, oh, wow. But I think uh, we had a very long night in uh, Malaysia. Uh, we went with a guy who um, knew quite a lot about animals there um, and we spent like eight hours at night in the forest. Oh wow. Uh, so it's, it's, it is quite exhausting actually. I mean you don't feel it when you do it but then the next morning when you get up or when you get home and, and you cool down yeah, for you sure. can feel how, how draining it is. You, you, keep, you have to be focused all the time and, and looking for animals so and sometimes um that that terrain is quite demanding because you have to go up or um yeah this is the something when is it a snake no it's, a no it's a fish that's a catfish isn't it yeah i can see there it's quite small and a big crab there mm -hmm. mm, an interesting place But up there, sometimes you can see, I mean, you see the eye shine, you can't necessarily see, they're very hard to spot, but you can sometimes see a civet cat. Mm. Okay. So we go back the same way, right? I think so. And I think that the less committed we are to seeing something, maybe the, the easier it'll be for us to spot something. <laughs> I want pretty photos with her, but she's gonna run away. So can you take your hook out, please, first? Maybe I got hook. Maybe you can. Oh, she's a long one too. Photo. But she's very pretty. Oh, cat snakes are beautiful. But it, she's not big, is she? She's long too. She's very chilled out, which is good. Sorry. Hello. But she looks very, very healthy. Mm -hmm. Very nice yes, snake. She is. Can you hold her and, and grab that? Okay. Right from here. Mmm. Nasty. No. No. Mm, from more from the bottom, I think. No. So we're walking and then Michaela spits, uh, spots a beautiful cat snake. They're both now making photographs together. The cat snake is, she's just very careful to, to sense get what's happening, what's going on. It would be very nice if she opened her mouth. Mmm. Delicious. <laughs> it's all about the light. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, it's the light that matters. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't look at me, not now! Oh, 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 oh. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Sit. No, it's just the two of us, then we don't mind yeah, spending like five hours with one snake, but mm -hmm. when we go with friends... Mm -hmm. One more. Uh, when we go with friends, I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry that we... I find it super endearing that, first of all, you're both equally photographing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's I, a shared... I think it's mostly because we have different ideas. Of course. And different background. And if I only I take photos, he's usually getting angry because he's like, no, you shouldn't do it <laughs> when he's taking photos. I'm like, but you could yeah, have done it differently. Right. So. <laughs> great, great spot. 
I know. I'm That's amazing, great. Good, aren't I? good, good spotting. Good spotting for sure. I've seen her tail, and I thought it was some kind of a, um, like a leaf or something. Right. Or something, but then it was too spotty. But I think it's a, it's a great thing to be able to to observe as an outsider how you guys work, <laughs> you know. And uh, naturally, if I wasn't here, you would you'd spend a lot more time and all this oh. this business. But not <laughs> not too long because then you yeah, want yeah. to find other animals and you don't want to disturb disturb them too yeah, much either. I'm, I'm so. always feeling bad with <laughs> touching them too sure. much. Sure, yeah. sure. But she'll be fine. She's a very pretty little. Oh, I, actually, I would take one photo of my friend. For me, it's kind of sweet to watch the both of you work together. Uh, and and w what shows is that you guys have fantastic images. Shiny snake. Very Lady pretty. Snake. Very pretty. Okay, so let's find that python. This. Okay, order. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Enjoy your long life. Yeah. What's the difference between what we're doing right now and tourist photos? People who go to a new country, take picture of the, of the and they go to Egypt, take picture of the pyramids. How is this different than just your everyday regular uh, I, tourist photography? I could imagine that if you go to see pyramids, you probably wouldn't go at night with a torch in the middle of a forest where you could be eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and this is this is <laughs> not a, a tricky style herping. Question, so. That's sometimes if you go herping, you have to go in the mud, water, and it's you know. When we went to Kuala Lumpur, I was literally eaten by ants, leeches, and everything really. So you, you yeah, you have to be aware that it's. Um, not exactly what most people would describe as leisure mm -hmm. it's more something that we really enjoy i i, I mean it it gives me pleasure to see an animal like this oh, um, sure. snake in the wild see that it's healthy that it's doing well uh, being able to take some photos and, and sure. just and just see that you know let it go let it be mm -hmm. I, th I think it's a way of enjoying the nature and seeing what most people don't see really because yeah. I, even in Hong Kong, people live here for many ta many years, and they don't even know that there are snakes here. So right, or the the, the diversity of, of and things, there are yeah. many many species here. That's amazing. Yeah, it's such a small country, really. It's such a small place, and yet there are so many species. It's very nice. Who's that? Could be a wild boar. Yeah, hello, wild boar. Could be. If you would like to share one of the photographs this evening sure. it might be kind of cool for people to go like oh so that's what a, a cat snake looks like and to have kind of listened to your process of <laughs> it's always neat to see how people work mm -hmm. uh could have been a bird i imagine uh, isn't that oh munjak. Munjak. Um, we've got lots of them in Monshan. nice and we've seen one has almost jumped on us inside Monshan. oh wow i think he ha hasn't noticed oh, and he thought it was a dog, so I was like... That's super cool. They are really, really nice, but very shy animals. Yeah, they're very, very timid. Many animals in Hong Kong make very dramatic noises. <laughs> There's also a bird that is just going... Uh, we've heard it, actually, when we were taking photos of the snake. Okay. Uh, it's just going from very low pitch to a very high pitch. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, this one. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for that. It's going faster and higher. You both flew, flew to Hong Kong together or separately? No, I moved first in August and he joined end of September. End of September. Okay, so when you joined in August, what were the headlines? Protests. <laughs> Protests. So you were just like... <laughs> I mean, I knew about it because I was, um, I've heard about it before because it was already yeah. uh, quite bad in uh, July and June. Uh -huh. uh, but then the UK was about to go through Brexit. And right. I don't know what to, didn't know what to think about it. And we also, we haven't really enjoyed living in in the uk to be honest he lived there for 10 years i lived there for six wow and we just we just weren't happy there it, it wasn't a place for us we thought 
well, I'm, I've only signed a contract for two years, so in case it, it gets bad, but, but we can always go back. Right. But to be honest, even though, even with considering everything that has happened, I still do like it here very much. It is very special. There are, there are so many unique <coughs> things here. So, Artur, when, when you landed, what were the, what were the headlines? Okay. You landed what, what month again? Sorry. September? September. Yeah, that was pretty hot. That was definitely pretty Yeah, and hot. then they shut schools in November, I think. October or November, they shut schools for a few days. Yeah. I love that we're, we're, I'm recording this, and in the, back, in the background, there's the munchak. <laughs> <laughs> well... We did see a snake. That's okay. That's yeah. two, That's actually. Two? Yeah. Oh, just because they're blind doesn't mean that no. they don't count. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just because they're small and blind, these poor things. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, so you hit the road. I guess this is going to be a perfect place to end the, the recording. The recording. Thank you very much. Thank and you. yes, you guys have to just walk back home. There's uh, the road goes that way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Why not? Maybe we'll find some snacks. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Hello world, this is exciting. This is the launch of Project Green Screen. Now, I've been trying to make Shooting It Raw explode and blow up, and I've had amazing guests. But now, I'm pushing it on to you. So I'm leaving it open to you. Just leave a comment somewhere, either on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, what else? There's uh, Instagram, there's coconuts on the beach. Just leave a note anywhere saying, well, why don't you talk to this person? And I will do the work of reaching out. Project Green Screen. So when I find a new name, I will add that name to the green screen and then I'll talk to them. Now, does that mean I'll be using a green screen? No, because this is audio. It's a podcast. So there's no video, no green screen. But I like the idea of having a big old green screen that I start writing down the names of people who are going to be on the podcast. Maybe it'll work. Maybe I'll add Kevin Hart. Yeah. So leave a comment. Leave who you'd like me to talk to. I'll add it to the green screen. And who knows? Someday, maybe I'll get them to talk to me on Shooting It Raw. Thanks. And have a happy new year. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting.